church today. Come on, say a good amen. A really good amen. You know, your worship this morning was extraordinary. I have to say that. We, we came here maybe thinking we had to lift you up, but you're right up there already this morning. Hallelujah. And we wouldn't expect anything else from PCA. Isn't it good to come to church and be uplifted? So we had you the Isaiah, please, chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number one. Just for a few minutes, I'm going to hand it back to Pastor George. Looking forward to coming before God in prayer as well. But we need to hear the word of the Lord today, don't we? We need to hear the word of the Lord. Isaiah 26 and verse number one. And I've tried, believe me, I've tried to get before the Lord for something appropriate. And this is about coping in times of chaos. Or if you like, what to do when you don't know what to do. What to do when you don't know what to do. Listen to what the word of the Lord says here. In that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates. That the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. And it says this, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is set on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord is ever lasting strength. He brings down those who dwell on high. The lofty city, he lays it low. He lays it low to the ground. He brings it down to the dust. May the Lord bless what we have just read together. Can we bow our heads again, please? Let's just bow our heads. We need the Lord for His Word. And Father, we're calling on you. We we'll love being here this morning. Just wonderful to be with your people. And but Lord, will you minister now by your word? Will you come to us again by your word that is your lamp and light onto our feet? And may we get that today, may we receive that today. It can only come by your ministry, Lord. And so we hand it over to you this morning. Will you minister to your people? And will you glorify your name in Jesus' name? Amen. It is important this morning that we hear the word of the Lord. Of course, we're living in significant times. Uncertainty, fear, and panic. In the past week, we've heard countless voices, and I think we're all aware of that. We're, if we're honest, we're sick and tired of listening to the people. And we've heard all the voices, many of which are unclear and left many with increasing confusion. And also anxiety. But one of the things we want to do this morning and say this morning in a practical way is that we are well prepared as a church for every situation this crisis may bring. We've had meetings during the week, conversations during the week of what is expected of us. We're very aware of that in regard to safeguarding, protecting, about being practical as well as pastoral in this crisis. We have to get that balance, brothers and sisters. We still have to be pastoral, but we have also got to be practical. And we know you appreciate that too. But one thing we shouldn't do is panic. Or immediately think of the church will be closed. People are going to need to hear from God now more than ever. And also people are going to need a place to turn to for direction and also hope. We read something during the week that I think reflects what our response should be. It's just a couple of lines and we read these lines. And it's called a call to clarity and mission. Just listen to this. A call to clarity and mission. Christians, it says, this is our moment to shine. This is our moment to shine. There's no need to panic, but there is a need to plan well and wisely. 
We are committed to protecting our church family and also to reaching out with the hope of the gospel to the wider community at this time. That's what we feel. This is our moment to shine. Yes, we have to get the balance between the practical and the pastoral. But brothers and sisters this morning, either Jesus Christ is greater than the Karbola crisis or he's not this morning. Either he's greater or he's not. Either he is greater than the coronavirus or he's not. And let me just bring that home a little bit more by saying this. Either what he can do in you is greater than this crisis or it's not. And you see, if it's not, then we really are in big trouble. But his name is higher this morning. That is not to say we shouldn't be wise or responsible. And the most at risk among us have to take seriously the advice that's given to them. But equally, people need the church, which is the body of Christ in this community, for direction, clarity, and hope. These are perilous times. We all know that. But brothers and sisters, they may be unprecedented, but they're not unpredicted. Let me say that to you again. These might be unprecedented days, but they are not unpredicted. What do we mean by that? The Bible has already warned us these days were coming. When epidemics and pestilences would invade the earth, it also foretold us the result of such things would be fear and chaos. And now we're in it. So it's important today to look to the Word of God again for direction and also reassurance. We need to know how to cope in times of chaos. Or we need to know what to do when you don't know what to do. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You know, I believe something. The verses that we read a few minutes ago from the book of Isaiah, what we have read today is really needed for this weekend. Just listen to verse 3 again. You will keep him in perfect peace, it says, whose mind is set on you because he trusts in you. That verse, that one little verse, and it's more than that. As Christians, we know it's more than that. It's the inspired, powerful word of God himself. And that one verse is so needed at the minute. Listen to it again. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is set on you because he trusts in you. The importance of this verse cannot be overemphasized this morning. Let me tell you why. Because there's a promise here. There's a promise here. You will keep him in perfect peace, it says. It's promising something here. Will you get that today? Will you take that today? The Word of God is promising us something here. You will keep him in perfect peace. This reminds us again that having what the Bible calls here perfect peace, and that's what it's called, perfect peace. And this reminds us what the Bible calls perfect peace is actually the greatest thing in the world today. I honestly, it's the greatest thing in the world. Peace is the opposite of fear. And notice what this verse actually promises. It says this, that this peace will keep you. This peace, this perfect peace, it's wonderful how it's described. And you know something, by the way, everything that God gives is perfect. The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father above. And notice what this verse actually promises. It says this, this perfect peace will keep you. You will keep them. You will keep him in, you will keep him in perfect peace, it says. And you know, it's so relevant as well when you think about it. This will keep you. Now, this is the promise here. This perfect peace is going to keep you. Let me try and bring it home a little bit. This will keep you from mental torment at the minute. Can I say that to you? This will keep you. We're talking about something real here. We know there's reality out there. But listen, the Word of God is real this morning. God's promise.
promising you something real. Do you get what he's saying here? He's offering you something today. It's going to keep you. And note that. Take that. Write that down. Some of you are taking notes. Write it down. Underline it. Because God's saying this. This will keep you. This perfect peace. It will keep you. Let me bring it home. It will keep you from mental torment. Because that's what's happening with people at the minute. It will also keep you from anguish of heart. It will keep you from despair. Honestly, brothers and sisters, if we take this one verse from God seriously, it will keep you from falling to bits at the minute. Now listen to what the Word of God says. This perfect peace is going to keep you. And we're taking that on this day. Listen, here's how it really is. It's, it's going to keep us from falling to bits. Because there's nothing like the peace of God. You will keep them in perfect peace. Let me just go a bit further. I don't want to go on too long. But I saw something here. Something remarkable here. Something absolutely remarkable. Do you, mean, do you know that one of the meanings of the Hebrew word keep there? And I were highlighting that. You will keep him. Do you see that Hebrew word keep? Do you know what one of the meanings is? To help you maintain. Listen to this. That word keep, one of the meanings in the ancient Hebrew language that the Old Testament was written, the meaning is this. It will help you maintain. This perfect peace of God is going to help you maintain. I find that out over this weekend and how appropriate that is at the minute. We need to maintain calmness in the midst of chaos. But God can help us do it. What we're looking at says, He'll help you maintain. We need to maintain the right attitude and response to what we're seeing. The church needs to maintain its focus when everyone around them is losing their focus. Listen, if the church loses its focus, what hope is there? Because we all have the answer of the Lord Jesus. To help you maintain. And that's what that word keep means. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stead on you because he trusts in you. By the way, this verse also, also tells us how to maintain the right response. And it's all to do with what we are focusing upon. How can we maintain the right response is about what we allow ourselves to focus on. Now, it's very difficult, brothers and sisters. See, just listen to this for a minute. We will keep him in perfect peace. Now listen to what it says next. Whose mind is stead on you. Whose mind is stead on you. I, I want to say this. At the minute, for, for us here, at the minute, and I'm choosing these words carefully, it's quite possible the COVID-19 virus has not affected any of us here yet at the minute. Physically. It's quite possible that COVID-19 has not affected any of us here. But it's affected us all mentally. Please believe this. What we are dealing with at the minute, at the minute now, I'm being careful what to say, but what we are in at the minute is a mental battle. And you know that, and so do I. You're in a mental battle at the minute. Worry uncertainty, anxiety, our own mindsets. They are battlegrounds for the great war of your mind. And by the way, that's the greatest war there is that you fight, is the war that goes on in your mind sometimes. And me too. But the Bible has a great lot to say about this sort of thing. And in our reading, it urges us. Now here's the, here's the importance of this today. What we have read is urging us to set our minds on the things of God. It's urging us, God, through His Word, it's urging you this morning. That's His child. We're son of the rejoicing in it. You've been up there this morning. We've been catching up with you today. Brilliant. We thought we'll, we'll have to lift them up. You're already there. You're a child of God. And God is urging you this morning to, to set your minds on Him constantly. Not just in here. And maybe that's easy if I could say that when we're together. But you're going to go out again in a half an hour's time. And you're going to be exposed to this wave of media and 24-hour news and 
and all of the propagating that goes on in it, and your minds will have been exposed to that, and there's a battle going on, you see, and God is saying, you've got to set your mind right, you've got to set your mind on what I am saying, and the promises that I have for you. You will keep them in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Again, the word stead there means to take hold of. And the word stead just means to pay, take hold of, to lay hold of. And honestly, brothers and sisters, we need to be taken hold of the promises of God every day of the minute. Come on, we say amen to that. Did you think of that? You should feel it, I feel it, I hope you feel it. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you, I want to go a little bit further here. And you might fall out with me, but I'm going to say something in a minute that I think needs to be said. But every day you need to be laying hold of the promises of God at the minute. And let me say this, see if you don't, the chaos of this world is going to lay hold of you. Honestly, man, the world on a break here, mentally and emotionally and everything. Listen, we walked through different drum beat this morning. And you see, if you don't lay hold of your mind and, and what's going on in your mind, see the chaos, the chaos out there, it's going to lay hold of you. And people say, well, oh, look, you, you should be more practical, we can't get rid of it. No, we can't get rid of it. But you see the doom and gloom and hopelessness, it's not going to do us any good. God is offering us something. What is it? Perfect peace. And it's going to keep you. It's going to help you with you. You know, the Bible talks a lot about strongholds, laying hold of strongholds. The enemy, the devil, can have a stronghold on people. He has. The world and its ways can have a stronghold on people. But Christians can and must bring down strongholds. Listen to this verse, just 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, what? For pulling down strongholds. Listen to this, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Are you ready? Bringing every thought into captivity to obedience of Christ. Here's the point in that. You can lay hold of every thought in your mind. You can take control of it. You can lay hold of it. And you can, in the name of Jesus this morning, you can lay hold, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. If you don't, under God, lay hold of your mind, it will lay hold of us, it will torment us, it will torture us. And brothers and sisters this morning, it ought not to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way because in the name of Jesus, we really do have the victory. The Bible tells us we can overcome work. We can overcome anxiety, we can overcome fear, and listen, we can overcome the last days. Do you see the importance of this Bible verse as we close? He will keep him in perfect peace, his mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. How to cope in days of chaos has to do with, with what we focus on. It's all about brothers and sisters. Let's be practical, deliberate action. And we spoke a moment ago, and I'm ending now, but practicality with pastoral for the church is the same in our own lives, deliberate actions. And I want to say this to you. You know, what we expose ourselves to, please listen for a minute, what we expose ourselves to, first thing in the morning, is highly important to us. Can I just leave you with that? I feel the burden of all the heart under God. What you expose yourself to, as soon as you wake, and as soon as you are alert that you're facing another day, what you expose yourself to in that first instance is crucially important for that day. It determines your thinking in that day. It will have an influence upon your thinking. If the first thing we do is grab our phone and check the news and so social media, that will impact our thinking for the whole day. Honestly, folks, these are days that are so crucial, so perilous, the first thing we have to do in the morning is connect with God. Now, honestly, folks, we're here today and we're rejoicing in church, but tomorrow morning's coming. And you're not going to be in church. 
And if the first thing we do is say, well, what do they say overnight? What are the government saying? And what's, what are they saying on Twitter or uh, Facebook or whatever? And, and what's the word now or whatever? If, you, if that's the first thing that invades your mind and influences you, that will taint your whole day. You need to connect with God first. Because he's going to do something to us and give us something. And if we can do that, and here's what I want to leave you with, we will maintain what he has for us even for the rest of that day. Habakkuk and chaos has to do with what we focus on. It also has to do to finish with what we choose to believe. You see, it says this, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is fed on you because he trusts in you. Isn't that wonderful? Because he trusts in you. Sometimes we don't know who to believe. Has the British government got the right approach to this? Or is the rest of the world right? And we're all grappling with that at the minute. I don't think they even know. But we know this, brothers and sisters. God is still on the throne. And he will remember his own. This verse proves it. You will, listen, I'm going to leave you now with this. You will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is set on you because he trusts you. God is still on the throne. And he will remember his own. And when you take this with you into another week, into your battleground, but when you take this from the Lord this morning, what to do and how to cope in times of chaos, what do you do when you don't know what to do? You see, when you don't know what to do, trust God. Trust God for his name's sake. Amen. Let's just bow our heads, Lord. Oh, Lord.